Hello, so in this video we're going to look at how the properties of bonding and structure affect the property of viscosity. So we're not going to go into as much detail of identifying the van der Waals forces and things in this video because you can have a look at my melting and boiling point property video and that will go into a bit more detail. So how the structure and bonding affects viscosity is very similar to how it affects the melting and boiling points of substances. But we're going to start off with first of all looking at what viscosity is and how you can test it in an experiment. So viscosity is a fluid's resistance to flow. So that's in terms of liquids, how thick it is. So the thicker it is, the more viscous it is. So if you think of like a gloopy syrup, that's got a high viscosity when compared to water, which flows very easily. So we would say that has a low viscosity. So the reason it's very similar to how the melting and boiling points are affected by the structure and bonding is that if you have stronger attractions, then the substance will have a higher viscosity. So that's because if there's stronger attractions between the molecules, they're not going to flow across each other as easily because they're going to be sort of gripping onto each other. When you're doing an experiment to test viscosity, this is a setup we normally use. So you'll have some glass tubing filled with your liquid and ideally that would be an accurate volume of the liquid when comparing them because if you had a different volume it could affect the viscosity result. So you put a ball bearing in a glass tube with your liquid and then you would ideally have a meter stick at the side as well which allows you to track an accurate distance. So the tubes get inverted and when you invert them, the ball bearing will start to fall and you would just time how long it takes for the ball bearing to fall a set distance. So on your meter stick, you would start the timer when it got to a certain point and then stop the timer when it got to another defined point. It doesn't matter what distance you record over as long as the distance for your repeat experiments is exactly the same. Once you have your results, the longer the time it takes for the ball to fall, the higher the viscosity of that liquid is. So it's taken longer for the ball to push its way through the liquid to move to the bottom. So the longer it takes, the higher the viscosity. The less time, that would be a lower viscosity. Let's compare three different liquids and work out which one we think would be the most viscous based on the structure and bonding within those substances. So we're going to look at hexane, propanoenol and glycerol and I've drawn their structures here. So what we need to bear in mind that the stronger the attractions are between the molecules, the higher the viscosity is going to be. So we need to then look at what van der Waals forces are actually occurring between these molecules and these substances. So hexane is a hydrocarbon and by rule of thumb, any hydrocarbon will always be non-polar, so it will only ever have LDFs between its molecules. Propan 1 all has got a hydroxyl group, so again, by rule of thumb, if you see a molecule with a hydroxyl group, it will have hydrogen bonding between its molecules. And then we come on to glycerol, which is also known as propan 1, 2, 3 triol. It also has hydroxyl groups, which means it will also have hydrogen bonding between its molecules. If you need more practice with identifying the types of van der Waals forces in a substance, then go and check out my video on the Higher Chemistry playlist titled Identifying Types of Van der Waals Forces. Back to the examples we have here. So stronger attractions means a higher viscosity. So we know that LDFs are the weakest of all the van der Waals forces. So then this means that this would have the lowest viscosity. For propanoenol and glycerol, they both have hydrogen bonding, but let's compare them to see which one has the stronger hydrogen bonding. So we know the hydroxyl groups are the part of the molecule that take part in the hydrogen bonding. Propanoenol has one hydroxyl group, glycerol has three, which means the hydrogen bonding in glycerol would be stronger, so it would have the highest viscosity. The propanoenol would therefore have a viscosity somewhere in the middle of the two. If we then put this in the context of the experiment that we've just talked about with the glass tubes and the ball bearings, the hexane would have the shortest time for the ball bearing to fall in that experiment and the glycerol should have the longest time for the ball bearing to fall. The propanol one all time should be somewhere in the middle. So in summary, 
When you're looking at the viscosity of different substances, it comes down again to the van der Waals forces that are occurring between those molecules. So you want to identify what types of van der Waals forces are present and then which ones are stronger. It is very similar to explaining the difference in melting and boiling points of different substances. And again, like I said, you can check out that video on my Herochemistry playlist if you need to. So because it's very similar, we're also going to look at volatility. So it's normally looked at in unit two, um, but it all ties into the structure and properties of bonding. So we're going to look at it here. So volatility is how readily a substance will evaporate, at, usually at room temperature. So that's how easily it turns into a gas. So based on that, we would expect that if there were stronger attractions between the mo molecules, it wouldn't evaporate as easily and therefore the volatility would be lower. So a higher volatility means that it evaporates more easily. So if those attractions between the molecules are stronger, the volatility will be lower. So if we compare methanol and methane, they're both very similar in structure, but methanol has hydrogen bonding between its molecules because it's got a hydroxyl group, whereas methane is a non-polar hydrocarbon, so it will only have LDFs. Therefore, based on all the stuff that we know already about structure and bonding and how it affects properties, that because hydrogen bonding because the hydrogen bonding in methanol is stronger than the LDS in methane, we would expect the methanol to have a lower volatility, so not evaporate as easily. To finish off the volatility, we're going to look at comparing two terpenes. So terpenes are molecules that you learn about in unit two, and they are typically used for fragrances. Now terpenes are hydrocarbons, so that means that they are non-polar and therefore only have LDS between their molecules. What you need to watch out for is a close relative to the terpenes, known as terpenoids, that tend to contain oxygens as well, so they could have hydroxyl groups. So just have a look at the molecules, see if there's any hydroxyl groups there. If there is, you can say that there's hydrogen bonding between the molecules. If it's all hydrocarbon, then you can say it's LDFs between the molecules. So when we're comparing the volatility of these two terpenes, we're looking at which one's got the stronger attractions or between the, its molecules. Now remember LDS will be stronger if you have more electrons and to work that out you can really just look at the size of the molecule. So because limonene is smaller it will have fewer electrons per molecule which means that it would have the weaker London dispersion forces. If it has the weaker London dispersion forces that means that it would be more volatile because it's going to be easier to separate those limonene molecules when you compare it to beta farnesine. Okay, so if you were looking to answer a question like this in the exam, this here is what you would ideally be looking to write. What you need to remember is that if you're talking about strength of LDS, you have to relate it back to the number of electrons. You can use the size of the molecule as a guide for yourself to work out which one will have more, but you have to reference the number of electrons in your answer. So. If you're saying the molecule's bigger, that's fine, but you need to say because it's bigger, it'll have more electrons and therefore the LDS will be stronger. Or if you're saying it's smaller, then that's fine, but you need to say the molecule's smaller and therefore it will have fewer electrons, so the LDS will be weaker. So to summarise all of these properties and how the bonding and structure affects them, for volatility, viscosity and melting and boiling point that was discussed in a previous video, you're really just looking to see what the structure and bonding is within the molecule and you can use that to work out what you would expect the properties to be for that substance. So if you've got strong attractions between the molecules, you would expect the melting and boiling points to be higher, you would expect the viscosity to be higher and you would expect the volatility to be lower. If it's weak attractions that are between the molecules, then you would be expecting the melting and boiling point to be lower the viscosity to be lower, but the volatility to be higher. So anytime you're asked about any of these three properties, you need to link it back to the type of attractions that are in the molecule and for melting and boiling point, what's broken when that's happening. Just remember for any covalent network elements, when it comes to melting and boiling point, they're extremely high because you're breaking strong covalent bonds when you melt it. For any covalent molecular and monoatomic substances, it all comes down to the Van der Waals forces.